I wanted to talk about this because she brought up some cool points. You know how I like Uppity Unicorn and I talk about her often because, you know, I love her content. Still subscribed, of course. And actually subscribed all the time. I didn't even know I put all on there. Eh, makes sense. I mean, you know, I prefer. I like her content. Now continuing. Um, I want to say, just starting out. Honestly, between the Lauren Smith situation and this situation with Christian, I kind of took the same approach both ways. But let's go. to Christian Obumsley what was done to Lauren Smith Fields. So, if Lauren Smith Fields is not still fresh in your heart or on your mind, basically she is the very young black woman who went out on a date with an older white guy. Um, excuse me, it was an in-house date in her home and she was found dead in her own blood in her own room um the white guy was let off the hook no that's not quite what happened she overdosed on drugs it was tested in her system um and yeah um, of course no one else is going to be blamed for someone else putting drugs in their body and them overdosing off of that drug even if they went on a bumble date with them or met up with them, no one, especially when it comes to those kind of dates, um, usually you're not going to know for sure that a person is not going to overdose. I mean, you don't, you're just getting to know this person. So they could very well be on their way out, like in his case. You know, I'm pretty sure she didn't tell him. I, I'm about to overdose. I took this many drugs. And um, do you want to stick around all night as I die from overdosing? No, she didn't say that. Um, so, I mean, how is he at fault? Exactly. This is why, to me, it's like, in both cases where they try to blame the white person in these situations, I never blamed I never uh, blamed um, the white man in Lauren Smith's case, and I never blamed uh, the other one uh, in, what's her name, uh, Courtney Taylor, or Christian, or whatever his name is. I never blamed Courtney Taylor in that case either. To me, it's like, um, you have to understand the situation at hand. You, you don't have to be like, Oh, a black woman died, therefore the white man is at fault. Oh, a black man died, therefore the white woman is at fault. So you mean to tell me if a black woman went on a date, a bumble date with a black man, if a black man was domestically abusing a black woman, and she used self-defense to defend herself. Would you have the same idea of things? And that's how you know your view of things is crooked or unclear or murky, basically. Because you only see it through the sense of someone being white. But if they were black, this wouldn't even be a question. Especially when it has to do with someone overdosing and doing drugs and, you know, um, dying because of that. But some white person happened to be in their presence. So that white person must have had something to do with them getting supposedly, you know, the drugs, even though they choose to put those drugs in their system and make them overdose you know so continue he was not investigated uh i believe the investigation has been reopened but initially the police let him off the hook saying oh well he didn't do anything he just looks like a really nice guy you know we'd be able to tell if he was a bad guy and they just let him go that's not true that's funny though I mean, it's actually the fact that she overdosed. I mean, it, it wouldn't matter if he was a stone-cold serial killer, for that matter. 
<laughs> I mean, the toxicology report shows that she had fentanyl in her system and many other drugs in her system. Um, so it, it's got nothing to do with the character of who he is as a man. I mean, if he has other charges unrelated to Lauren Smith's death, he can very well be arrested and have charges against him for that. It's just that in the case of Lauren Smith's death, she didn't die because he was a bad man. She didn't die by any of his actions. She died by taking too many drugs and putting them in her system and dying because she was addicted to too many drugs. I mean, this is what happens with drug addicts. They take too much of a certain substance and then they overdose. With white men or white women in their presence or not in their presence. This just happens, you know. Continue. And, you know, left things at the scene and her family had to collect them. And, of course, once you go to the scene and collect things, you know, now they're no longer valid. They become inadmissible evidence. They become tampered with evidence. And it's thrown out in the courts. But, I mean, her blood, pills, date rape drugs, just X, Y, Z. I have to say the words because the words are important. I can't be out here saying grape and actual assault and domestic violence. Like, I, I have have to call it what it is and if that gives my problem my channel a problem is fine but what I'm I have to agree with that I mean like I know people are always focused on that money and stuff I mean if you can't even convey to people what's going on because of money uh, is it really that important what you're talking about or is your money too important to even talk about the subject why don't you just leave it alone or you know disregard disregard it altogether like in this case so um, thumbs up to you, uppity unicorn. Thing is, um, there's a way to talk about this story when it comes to Christian O'Bumsley in a way that is respectful, right? Because in stating the obvious, we know that this man was a massive colorist and massive in his speech when it when it comes to anti-black woman speech. The fact that he was against black women or anti-black women is not an issue to me. I really don't feel that's a big issue to me here. Um, that's his That's his sexual interest. If it gets him hard or whatever, that's his business, you know. I don't really think it matters. He can't even get hard anymore, so why do we even care what he used to get hard by? <laughs> You know what I mean? He's dead. That's what I was trying to say in my last video. Like, he's dead. He he can't get aroused. He can't love. He can't be attracted to anybody. Okay? He can't even beat anybody up anymore. Thankfully. You know? So, I mean, he can't do anything. So, it doesn't matter what kind of um, women he likes, liked, will, will like in the next world. Or if he will ever like a woman again in the next world. Uh, we don't know, you know. Um, so, uh, to me, you know, that's not a big issue. To me, what's more of the issue is domestic violence. But I understand she did bring up di domestic violence. Um, and we'll, we'll wait if she says anything on it. But I, I can kind of tell where this is going. So, let's continue, though. Um, I've read the top four articles on this and honestly, shame, shame, shame on the journalists because it's a very sloppy job that they are doing. Some are saying he was stabbed in the shoulder. Some are saying he was stabbed in the chest. Either way, it was fatal. I have seen articles where they are misconstruing the things that are said by uh, the group of all white friends, by the way, all white friends who are testifying on behalf of his killer, who was his girlfriend. Not true, though. They weren't all white. Some of the people I saw were black. Not that it matters what race they were. I don't get why it would. To me, you know, more so what matters is the idea that they are friends, okay? Friends are important to note. 
A friend will cover for a friend. A friend will lie for a friend. A friend may not even lie, may not even try to deceive people, but by their own perception of their friend, they are already of a deceived mindset. Basically, they already have an unclear view of their own friend. They're biased because they are their the friend. Basically, you know. So to me, I don't really think. I don't think that it makes much sense to listen to a friend say anecdotal situations that happened, because a friend will maybe spin a situation, or a friend will already have it pre-spun because that's their natural bias. Basically, that's where they naturally lean. They're not even trying to be mean to anybody. That's just what they do, and that's human nature. To be partial to the people you're partial to, you know. So、um, continue. Um, let me just go ahead and read this really quick.、Um, OnlyFans star 25 is arrested for stabbing boyfriend 27 to death during a domestic dispute in their luxury Miami high-rise. Model is now in mental ward after making suicidal threats. Just to let you guys know, so far they haven't been pressed on the basis of self-defense. Courtney Clenny, twenty-five, was arrested for her boyfriend's murder Sunday night. The social media influencer stabbed Christian Obumsley, twenty-seven years old, in the shoulder. During an apparent domestic dispute at their Miami condominium, Obumsley was rushed to a nearby hospital where he died from his injuries. It is unclear if Clenny stabbed Obumsley in self-defense. Now, why they would add that if it's unclear, I don't know. But I feel like it's to create a narrative because basically they they let her off the hook. They took her into custody. She she cried about how she was going to hurt herself. And there's some kind of a Bates law, Bates law in Florida that says, hey, if a person's having a mental disturbance, they are allowed to go to a hospital for you know, forty eight to seventy two hours to clear that thing up. And during that time where she was put in the hospital, she escaped. Escaped, and there are no charges as of yet.、Uh, anyhow, neighbors and friends claim the, cu- the couple has a history of domestic violence, and police have responded to their apartment for multiple disturbances. I want to make very clear that this Daily Mail dot co dot uk news article is giving. Listen, the most immediate. News sources shows that this is a man who has never laid hands on this woman. The most immediate reports now reports that are coming out later. Yeah, I think maybe or maybe that's what's going on because a lot of the information might be、um, a little、um, too early to tell in these cases because information has come out by now that、um, actually he has witnesses who have. Domestically abused her. I mean, that have known that she he domestically abused her,、um, and also、um, there have been、um, reports showing that she actually called the police several times on him for him domestically abusing her. So I mean, you know, it, it is actually a different story now. Continue. Are are. Framing the narrative in a way where you would think that they had some kind of mutual domestic violence that he was hitting her and she's hitting him and they're doing this to each other. No, the most instant reports that came out, the 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 first that I heard of the news was of、uh, this guy has never laid a hand on. The only ones who are saying that he's never、um, laid a hand on her is his friend. Uh, and that's obvious. His friends will obviously say things like that because they're his friends. Her hasn't never hit her, and she's always got her hands on him.、Uh, whenever they've seen them have some kind of a domestic dispute, 
uh, dispute, right? Courtney and Christian. So Courtney Clinney has not been formally charged in her boyfriend's death and is currently hospitalized after she made suicidal threats while in police custody. Now, from what I read initially, right? Because this is the dailymail.co.uk. Honey, this is a country away. This is literally across the pond. The, what I read earlier, which is not present in this article, but I chose this article for a few reasons. Um, what I read is that she escaped. She is out of custody. She is not in a hospital. She is not with the police. And folk can I don't know about that because I haven't heard anywhere else that she escaped. But okay, go ahead find her. A Florida OnlyFans model has been arrested for her boyfriend's murder after she stabbed him in an apparent domestic dispute. He was rushed to a nearby hospital. Uh, look, the guy is from North Texas. Um, she was hospitalized over mental health concerns, making suicidal threats while in police custody. Um, there is a neighbor that is saying that, oh, well, I could see into their apartment and I could tell he was swinging at her. And I'm just like, you don't know if he was swinging at her or if he was trying to like protect himself. He seems like, according to their friends, the, the, the... <laughs> that's funny. So a swinging at a woman is protecting himself? Uh, at any point, a man could get out of the situation. Um, she, wasn't, she wasn't chasing him with a knife. And the reason you know she wasn't chasing him with a knife, because if she was actually, her point was to kill him and stab him, it would have to be two things. One, she would stab him multiple times. People who stab, they stab multiple times. They don't stab one time, and they definitely don't stab in the shoulder. People know you don't stab people in the shoulder and expect them to die. And if you're just stabbing people for fun, now why are you doing that? Obviously, no one is stabbing people for fun. People who stab people in the effort to not kill them is off of a defense mechanism, basically, to stop a person from hurting them. So, I mean, like, it, that's one side of it. Also, the other side of it is the fact that he was stabbed in the shoulder, which means he was facing her. He was not running away from her. He was facing her, which lets you know that he was a threat towards her because he was actually facing her. It was, you could tell, if, if he was trying to get away from her, then he would have turned away from her and actually run away from her. So she would not have access to his front shoulder. Friends of theirs who have been testifying, it seems like he's the one who's been protecting himself. And I mean, if you look at the two, you can clearly see whose facial features, body language, you can see who is displaying dominance. You can say who you can see who's displaying physical dominance, who is displaying um, low key intellectual dominance. Like you can just kind of see what's going on here. You can see the submissive party here. Um, Miami police responded to multiple domestic disturbances. Wait, how can you see who's dominant and who's submissive by photo? What are you doing? <laughs> This is just weird, especially, you're, you're totally ignoring the actual um, comments of what he specifically said. He said he wanted someone who was submissive. Most likely, in a situation like that, the, of course, a man would want someone who is submissive, so then he can easily break her, basically. You know, a woman who is not going to back down and is not going to be broken easily, it's not their, what they favor because they need someone who's going to just lie back and take it, basically, as they just pulverize them. So, continue. Um, at the couple's apartments over the last three months, um, I don't believe the neighbor, I'll just be honest, I don't believe the neighbor. The neighbor is a white male who probably has a problem with black males, but here is 
what I want to submit. Okay. You have all these pictures. Dude, that's what I mean. You have constant racism against white people. Now, in this case, I mean, like, Uppity having issues with white people, um, that's not a big issue, considering she said before she is a past pro-black woman, and, I mean, she, I mean, she has her interest in black men and things of that nature. That's all okay to me, because I've always thought, you know, if you are of that nature, you know, you just don't interact with white people too much, you'll be fine, you know. So I don't blame her for that, and honestly, and honestly, I kind of feel like it's better to have that perspective than to have a perspective of being inferior. You know, if you think of yourself as inferior, or you think of black people in a bad way, um, that's worse, obviously, if you're a black person. So I'm not knocking it completely, but I'm saying when we're dealing with other situations, when you have a bias against white men, when you have a bias against white women, um, and we're trying to figure out if someone committed murder or um, things of that nature. It's like, you know, you have to either remove your opinion from the discussion. If you're one of those people who have negative connotations and negative beliefs on white people naturally, you know, or, you know, put that to put that aside and actually think about what actually happened, what everybody is saying, and things of that nature, and what it means for the people in um, the, this environment. People who are friends, who we all know friends have more of a bias than a passer, uh, basically a person who's just an acquaintance, not even an acquaintance, Someone who's just a bystander, basically, who's just looking and seeing the situation for what it is, that's more of a non-biased situation. Someone who's just a bystander than someone who is actually a friend. You know, that's beyond color. This can apply to black men, black women, black, I mean, white men, white women, so forth. You know, it can apply to everybody. That's why, that's how you know it's not on a biased sense of, oh, this person's white, oh, this person's black. No, it's on the basis of, oh, this is a friend, oh, this is a bystander who's looking through the window, you know. That's how you have to think of things. Going forward. Uh, I mean, here's Courtney. Uh, she's an OnlyFans model. Um, I can actually just... Here's uh, Courtney and um, Christian again. So there it is, a Florida's Baker Act. So the Baker Act says that um, the law allows law enforcement judges, doctors, and mental health experts to commit a person to a treatment center for 72 hours if certain violent or suicidal tendencies are displayed. Now they're sitting here, I, like I said, I, uh, some of this article is like, do better, do better. They're saying it is unclear when or if she'll be released from the hospital. However, new content was added to her OnlyFans page the day after she was detained. And that is because she is no longer detained. She was able to add her new OnlyFans content the day after she was detained and released into the hospital and escaped from the hospital. Not true, though. That can be actually automatically done. So that wouldn't actually have to do with that. Uh, they said that they put her on a 72-hour hold, I think. So, I mean, this was... This was... Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it it could have actually been where she's... She was out by the time... The next day after that was posted, so that could have been pre-posted, basically. Hospital. That's how that new racy OnlyFans content got there. So, Obamsley was a northern Texan man. He moved from North Texas to uh, a luxury high-rise apartment to be with Courtney and their friends said we would never have guessed it would have escalated to this point I think I speak for our whole friend group we are just shocked very distraught 
Now, even though this man is dead, the friend group was like, well, we feel like we lost Courtney too. I mean, if that doesn't show how much they could care less for this individual. When this guy is dead, this girl is alive. She kills him, unalives him. Well, honestly, in that case, no, because considering she was just defending herself, she'll be forever changed, too. Because, I mean, how would you feel if you had to stab someone in the shoulder and they actually died? Which wasn't even your intention, obviously, because if you stab someone once in their shoulder, you're not intending for anybody to die. You expect them to go to the hospital, get patched up, probably, maybe the next day, even be released. You know, but apparently she may have hit some artery that was really important there, you know, and, you know, that ended his life. But do you think that someone is going to be still the same after all that? No, they're still, they're obviously going to be majorly affected by, you know, basically, they're going to be majorly affected by uh, that traumatic event. Even if it was to save their life from a domestically abusive monster that is supposed to be their boyfriend. And the friend group, well, we feel like we lost Courtney too. Okay. Anyhow, um, the Obumsley family has raised more than $65,000 on GoFundMe. Obumsley was killed a week before his 28th birthday, meaning he was born uh, in April. Um, and the testimonies about this man's character, for the most part, is positive. People are saying, oh, he's such a good guy. He's such a good guy. He would never hurt a fly. He would never hurt a fly. But a black woman, that's a different story. So again, there's a way to talk about this in a way that is not going to bruise the family, right? You don't have to drag him. You don't have to celebrate. You don't have to say that's what he gets. Uh, this, all this has nothing, 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 nothing to do with the situation at hand. It's a matter of murder versus self-defense. End of story. It doesn't matter if he said all black women need to go be put and got gathered up and put in a pyre. It wouldn't matter, okay? It has nothing to do with the situation. The situation at hand has no black woman involved in the situation at all. And if it was a black woman involved, well, I would actually say that would actually leave more um, reason to believe it's actually murder. Because in that case, you know, someone would actually have even more motive um, if they were hurt or whatever. Because they'd be like, oh, he hated black man, black women or whatever. You know, but in this case, obviously, it, no black woman was involved. You know, it was basically off of a domestic dispute, they're saying. And quite obviously, domestic abuse because she called the police seven times in the last month because he was beating her up and because of domestic abuse perpetrated against her. And she has witnesses. So that's all I'm saying there. Um, continue. These are only a few of his tweets. You can read them. Um... I have some very sore feelings about the word Akata. Uh, I have lost subscribers over the word Akata. And I will always feel how I feel about that Nigerian N-word. That is their version of the N-word. Now, they may come and gaslight you. and I know it's the N-word and... It some it, 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 that they use but that's not the point who gives a darn that he used that word black people use the n-word all the freaking time and somehow it's okay but then you get mad at someone who's actually more physically black than you for saying and the n-word in another language you guys are so weird <laughs> say oh it just means straight cat bro 
it's the same way an Arab would tell me, well, you know, uh, I, I, you know, it just means slave, like, like, bro, within your context, that is your N word. And it's loud and clear. It's loud and clear. So these are only a few tweets. We really don't need any more than this because the man is gone and has met. The part of the reason you don't speak ill of the dead is because they have met the consequences of their own actions. This is just for black women to mind their business. Allow, you know, it, it, so far this woman has gotten off. I don't understand why it be. Why is this supposed to be something that assages black women to be like, it's okay because he was, he didn't like black women? What, what, he almost act like I, I want him to like black women. What about for the rest of us who don't want black men to like black women? At least black women like ourselves. So what, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to be like, oh no, we're supposed to stand up for a domestically abusive black man because he's a black man who we're not upset at because we don't want black men attracted to us? Is that what you're saying? I don't think anyone should stand up for someone who is a domestically abusive man. Whether he's a black man, a white man, an Asian man, Hispanic man, domestically abusive people in general, male or female for that matter, you know, they shouldn't be supported. That's just how I see it. And whoever's going to put up the fight for this man's justice, it, it can't and should not be black women. He made it very clear that, I mean, I could go on. I, I, I could I could literally pull up more, uh, some of the more graphic uh, tweets where he's like, you know, white titties are greater than black titties. And, and I can't believe one of my followers thinks that I talk. Now, that's the thing. I don't understand why black women, and I guess this applies to the dark-skinned black women, considering that's what he's talking about. I don't get why do they put this shit on themselves, though. This, that kind of comment shouldn't insult anyone but him, because he has black nipples. And that's what he's talking about. He's not saying the shape of a black woman's boobs is less than is the shape of a white woman's boobs, the boobs, the shape of black boobs and white boobs are the same shape. So he's specifically saying color. And if you pay attention to that whole situation, well, what color do you think his nipples are? You really think he's sporting pink nipples on a black body? Which is fucking scary if that was the case. He better have some black nipples, which is ugly too. I'm I'm sorry. A black nipples on a black man is ugly. It's not just ugly, it's weird. It looks like the nipples are burnt to me. That's just how I see it. Um and that's just a black man. I'm not attracted to black women. I I don't really care what their nipples look like. I honestly think that women's boobs look kind of odd, and I think that's a genetic thing. That I think because uh, even my mother has the same idea that it's kind of odd that you just have big fat globs coming out of the chest. kind of like weird. But um, so that's why I'm like, I, I, I don't really judge women's chests like that. I mean, I like the fact that my chest is perky because, you know, people like that, you know. So when I was like, when I got breasts, I was like about actually honestly like six, seven I started going to puberty and stuff, and it took me until 14 to realize, oh, people like these things, and then I realized, oh, I got good ones, <laughs> and then by the time I'm like 17, 18, not 18 especially, I realized, oh, I have, this is this shit kind of like situation, <laughs> so I mean like in that sense, I've always been proud of them, because it's like, ah, I, out of everyone, you know, it's kind of like you have the good ones even though to you before everybody else had their own opinion and press on you you kind of just thought what the fuck especially when i was a single digit age seven eight nine it was like what the fuck 
kind of like situation. These look weird, one. I never seen breasts before. So that's why it was just like, these are really weird, you know, <laughs> to me. So it was just like, yeah. But continue. Basically, what I want to say in total is just that, you know, I don't think he's insulting, um, I don't think he's insulting black women. I think black women are putting that insult on themselves. He's insulting himself because he's got black burnt nipples. And that's what's creepy and weird. Like, why the fuck do you have burnt black nipples? You know, I I wouldn't be dumb enough to attack a black man, a mixed man, a Hispanic man, an Asian man, with the same color nipples I have. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't say tan nipples look like, I don't know, um, something negative, I guess. Um, I wouldn't say that the white nipples look better than, you know, tan nipples. That would be dumb, because what am I doing to myself? Someone who's not smart enough to understand they just degraded themselves needs only for somebody to let them know how bad they made themselves look. When you have failed to do that, and you failed to make an idiot understand, or at least show how dumb an idiot is, then you've put yourself on that level as that idiot. And he obviously is the idiot. So continue. Black girls. Was. I don't talk to, I don't deal with black girls at all, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people trying to gaslight. Well, but a lot of black women who aren't interested in black men don't want black men to be attracted to them. So we don't want them to talk to us. Um, many times that's a very dangerous situation. When they talk to us, it's bad because we're not interested in them. And then they start threatening us. They start following us. They start doing stuff. And it can get really hard and bad. I mean, like, I've actually lost apartment. Um, um, I was trying to move into an apartment or try to get basically a um, situation where I was trying to see an apartment. And I couldn't see that apartment because I didn't want to go there because somebody was actually following me. And I had to take the long way to try to lose this person, basically, before I could go to that place to actually look at that apartment. By that time, it was too late. And somebody else took the apartment the next day, you know? So, I mean, it's dangerous. It's dangerous, one. It's inconvenient. It messes with other situations that you're trying to do in your life and then there's a black man trying to mess up your life basically you know with different situations that's just one anecdotal one i could give you so many others all because they wanted to talk to someone all because they wanted to um you know be interested in you and all because you know this is not a mutual interest and it never will be because you're not interested in black men, you know. So that's what I mean with these type of people like uppity. They don't understand that not every black woman's goal is to have a black man interested in her or even talk to her. They, many of us don't want anyone to talk to us that's a black man. We don't want that. Yeah, we're good without that. So think, uh, um, continue. You love the black woman in his family. Well, most black men who hate black women love the black woman in their family. It, it, it's kind of typified. It's it's kind of, we, we have it down to a diagnostic criteria. That's on the list. They tend to think it, it's, it's Lil Wayne. It, it's Lil Wayne and his uh, his daughter. I never have another dark skin child again and dark skin woman. I bet that bitch look better and whoop de whoop whoop but hey, my daughter is this and this because uh, Lil Wayne is not Lil Wayne, I see Lil Wayne very differently because Lil Wayne is technically brown skinned. He's not dark enough where he's far from a red bone. If you understand what a red bone is, people will keep changing the word what red bone means, but you can tell what his idea of red bone is, is all the women he basically had children with except the Asian woman. All those women would fall under a red bone category, basically. Um, uppity would fall under the red bone category. Lil Wayne isn't that far from Uppity's color. Lil Wayne isn't that far from my color. You know, 
so to me, it's not wrong for him to prefer a phenotype that looks similar to him. You know, this is the saying, brown-skinned black people, we constantly get attacked by dark-skinned black people for not preferring them. And they're, I mean, it's not a shock. Of course, brown-skinned people sometimes actually like being brown and they like, think that some people look more attractive while being brown. You know, he didn't say someone looked better being light-skinned. He said that they look better being red. Red is a form of brown skin, so it's not really a shock he would think that someone looks better brown. It's not even a big deal, honestly. You have to think. If a white person thinks another person of another color, maybe an Asian person, would look better white, is it really wrong for a white person to think the Asian person looks better white? No. The problem is, is that the Asian thinks that they would look better white. That's the problem. The white person thinking they look better white is natural. They, sh they are white. Well, what do you want them to think? You know, of course they think what they look like is better. It, the problem with dark and black people is this. They don't understand. They can't. Sometimes they have a hard time understanding that they should think that people look better dark. They can't understand that because they don't think that of themselves. So if they're not thinking that they look better dark skin and think that of other people, that they would look better if they were dark skin like them and had a phenotype like them, they wouldn't be bothered by someone saying that isn't dark skin by saying that they look better brown, basically. They look better light skin. They look better white, whatever. They would be like, whatever, you would look better than dark. You know, they could transfer that right back. You know, and, you know, people have to have, have to have, like, some kind of peace with someone else's opinion. It's just an opinion at the end of the day, you know. So continue. She's my daughter, and she's a, she's a millionaire in UA. Everybody else can't be dark-skinned, but their loved ones can't, right? No black women deserve respect except for the ones that they're related to. We've heard it all before. There are some comments with some... Oh, but last thing I wanted to say. With Lil Wayne, of course he has a dark-skinned daughter. He can't help that his daughter's dark-skinned. That's just how it turned out, you know? So I don't really see anything with that either. Of course he loves his daughter. You know, it's the same thing with uh, Snoop Dogg's uh, daughter. Snoop Dogg is brown-skinned too, but his daughter is dark-skinned. Just like Lil Wayne is brown-skinned, but his daughter's dark-skinned. It's the same thing, you know? They they were with women who were brown-skinned, you know, and sometimes brown-skins have light-skinned children, sometimes brown-skins have brown-skinned children, and sometimes they have dark-skinned children. It's not really shocking with brown-skinned people because with us, um, we kind of express both sides in ourselves. You can see sometimes we look darker, sometimes we look lighter, sometimes through age, we might look darker at one point and lighter at another time, and so forth. So if that's the case, then the um, the it's not really a shock that our children would look light skin, brown skin, or dark skin. It's kind of like you know in our genetics. So it's not really. I don't think it's a big deal that he loves his dark skin daughter, but he does have a preference for if he has to choose which color he thinks looks best, he's gonna choose his own brown skin. That's nothing wrong with that. Extreme colorism and. Um there's nothing more harsh than akata right i mean it's it's the nigerian version of the n-word just like you would have something like uh somalis who say uh galo for white people and ajanebi and other things for black people um it's like the the way south africans because arabs have the word kafir as well but the way a south african who speaks afrikaans uses kafir is the akata the nigger the abid it, it, it's their their equivalent their linguistic equivalents of one another and um hey the boys could get it too i mean he's like why is there always that one ghetto black boy in the back talking throughout class 
uh, ghetto black boy, Akata, I mean. Saying someone is a ghetto black person doesn't mean they hate black people. Could really mean they just don't like ghetto people who are, you know, black. Because they don't like ghetto people, you know. I don't think it's really that he has an issue with black people. I'm thinking this. He doesn't see himself as a ghetto black person. Why do you think he doesn't see himself as a ghetto black person? And what distinguishes him from a ghetto black person? Don't you get it? There's a difference. We're not all ghetto black people. That's not a part of our identity. That's just trash. You know, white people are able to distinguish their trash from their non-trash. Why can't black people understand the ghetto black people are just the trash? You don't have to hold on to them. Let them go. You know, they're not, they're not our people like that. You know, it's not racist to acknowledge a black person as trash. It's not racist to acknowledge a white person as trash. There's Hispanic trash. Trash comes in all colors. It's not solely to one race, you know. So there's nothing wrong with him saying a ghetto black person, ghetto black woman, ghetto black man. Don't you get it? Ghetto black person is not specific to actually being a connotation against black people. It's specific to that person who is a ghetto person who happens to be black. Obviously, as you can tell, he's black. He understands he's black. He's not saying anything's wrong with him being black. So, you know, in that regard, I don't even think he's really against black people in that regard. I think there might be a skin tone thing where he might not like certain, certain things he has um, characteristically having to do with the skin tone, but not on that level. But the exception with the color is weird. Continue. This man wanted to be none of our business, none of our African-American business, really as a collective, but definitely. Uh... Why should he? He's not even black American. He's Nigerian descent. And honestly, I think that black Americans, we shouldn't have a community of this sort. When we're not even of the same community, we're not of the same race, we're not of the same ethnicity. When I took my DNA test, I took it to find out the real um, heritage of my family. I did not try to go to black American people and say, hey, we're one in the same. What? Why would I do that? I'm only doing that because white people told me to go to black people and say, hey, we're one in the same. But white people don't even do that to white people. White people understand German, French, Italian, and so forth. Those are different heritage. Those are different cultures. So you know your roots. They know their roots. You know what I mean? Why shouldn't we know our roots? Why shouldn't we distinguish ourselves with the people that we came from rather than trying to actually combine ourselves with people who aren't even of the same people as us? And to me, it's like, of course, a, a man of Nigerian descent has no business falling for this ignorance. Black Americans shouldn't even fall for this ignorance. But a Nigerian who knows where its family comes from, knows his roots, knows his culture, why the fuck would he go for a fake culture? Why would he go for something that was segregated and basically, um, and basically, you know, labeled for its segregation and inferiority and not actually even a real entity of itself. It was just throw away by white people. So, you know, of course, no, he wasn't associated with black Americans as a collective whole. If you understand Nigerian people to Cameroonian people to other types of African people, they don't say we're all of the same culture, we're all of the same people. You know, that's what black Americans do because white Americans did that to them in the past. So continue. Uh, Anti-black women. It doesn't take for you to drag him. It doesn't take for you to insult him. It doesn't take for you to further grieve his family. It's just, hey, 
leave this one alone. It's just like the boys on TikTok who were just like, man, I don't want no ugly black people protesting for me. I need me a fine ass Italian protest for me. I need me a Latino protest for me. I need me a white girl for me. I don't want you ugly ass bitch protest. I don't need no dark bitch protesting for me. It's giving the same energy. Yeah, but why? I don't get this. Why do you constantly use what a black man does to degrade de to degrade himself as something against dark skinned black women that's just so weird like let that dark skinned black man hate on himself why are you associating that with a knockdown on dark skinned black women that isn't if a dark skinned black man says he doesn't want to look like himself it is not a dark skinned black woman's issue or problem or even offense that he said that about himself. So continue. So we just mind our business. So, uh, Courtney's on the run. I don't know why they're saying. No, she's not on the run. Somebody actually saw her, spotted her at another place. Nobody, um, there's no charges yet. Or I don't think there ever will be because, um, it was self-defense. Continue. She's being held anywhere. Again, this is daily.co.uk. Um, so maybe their facts aren't straight. But uh, Courtney Clenny's on the run. She has not been charged with anything. She was in custody for killing this man. And of course, listen, I made the comparison with uh, him and Stefan Clark because he was also, uh, and I believe Stefan was successfully defended um, by the Asian community. You know? Uh, him and his, you know, Asian girlfriend and their colorism and their anti-black female sentiment, you know, that's fine. Um, leave, leave people with those that they love. And this is, you know, this is what he wanted. He wanted to belong to the white community and the white community can, um, or at least, you know, didn't want anything to do with African Americans in specific, uh, the women. I think it is incredibly ironic that he would talk. I think honestly, you're just ignorant to the difference between Black Americans and Africans who come to this country and their children, basically. I think you're not really familiar with that. That's why you feel offended that Black. Americans may not be associated with Africans, and Africans may not associate themselves with black Americans. Especially when you make black American out to be something that's completely not. Um, it makes it less um, likely for other people to try to associate with it, because it almost seems like some subculture or underground thing, you know. Anyway, continuing about black women disrespecting themselves on um, TV and at the same time being with an OnlyFans model. And it'd be one thing if it was, you know, I play video games on OnlyFans like Soldier Boy, but that's not what she does. Again, this is why we say as black women. I didn't know people could play video games on OnlyFans. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> People pay people to play video games? Really? <laughs> On OnlyFans? How does that work? Like, seriously. Continue, though. The preferences don't really have to have all that good character. They don't really have to be those good virginal church girl, whatever it is, the way that you do. Why does anyone care, though, what, a, what his preference has to be? Only the mammies are concerned about this shit, okay? Personally, I mean, like, those of us who aren't interested in black men, I just wish them well for wherever they go, and hopefully whoever they go with, um, they are good, too, because I hate when black men do things like this, 
and they make themselves look really badly to um, society because they basically, you know, aren't really a safe option for other races of women, you know, and this is the type of thing that people tend to think of with black men. They try to say basically that black men will leave other races, other women of other races, you know, single moms, they say they won't stick around, you know, they won't be committed, you know, they will abuse them, that whole physically abusive thing has been a long time assumption and stereotype of black men, so I mean, like, he, um, really did prove those stereotypes to be right with the whole thing of being a domestic abuser, you know, and attacking his girlfriend on a regular, enough where she had to call the police seven times in a month. So, I mean, like, to me, it's kind of like, um, I don't see why, I don't see why, I, I see, I don't see why it would be appreciated for things to go out negatively for black men when they are with women of other races for the perspective of black women in interracial relationships because when black people are viewed negatively for interracial relationships, that covers us all. It doesn't just cover black men. It attacks black women and black men. We both have negative stereotypes, you see. So when the stereotypes are true for black men, it, it turns on black women too. You know, and many of them can be very similar to each other, for that matter. So, to me, it's just, like, personally, I don't understand, like, how... I don't understand why people, you know, want the worst for these situations. I understand in cases like this where people like black men, yes, it makes sense because they want black men to be basically only able to be with black women so then they can have more options with black men but for those of us who don't want black men options this is not a good look and i say that as a person who has said he is a monster you know he is a person who you know is a he was a person sorry um who was you know abusive, aggressive, and, you know, seemingly dangerous, but I still just think, you know, it's a bad look, you know, and it's not something I wish, it's not something I want, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, continue, though. The way Let's that you do as a black woman to be with black men or you're some big black whore, they, they don't have to do that. So he can simultaneously you know and, and not just him but you know other men who are similar can simultaneously drag black women for the way that they carry themselves but then align themselves pair their pair their selves and fall in love with women who are doing the same and the only difference is is skin deep so um again he doesn't need to be called out of his name he doesn't need to be dragged for filth, it just, this is a story, these are the facts, you report the facts, and you sit the hell back. Okay, to me, I kind of just see it as, oh, I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> oh, it's turning to something else. Um, but anyway, um. yeah, but anyway, to me, I kind of feel like what was done was something that I feel in the end, everything kind of turned out the way it should have, you know, because I mean, like you get what you put out. If you are trying to attack someone and put their life at harm's way. And now your life is at harm's way because they were trying to defend themselves. I think in total, you know, there's nothing to really get angry at him for because, um, you know, he's gone. 
you know, he's no longer a problem to anyone and he will not beat anyone else up. You know, he will not cause any more trauma to anybody else, you know. So I can't say that, you know, there's anything to be angry at him for. But I just kind of feel like, I just feel like, honestly, with this sector of YouTube, people get so obsessed with race. And that's what I really wanted to talk about with this video was just like, how much people get obsessed with race. It's almost like, it's just really like, it's not healthy, honestly, because it's like, you guys talk about race when it's just about, you know, a domestic dispute. Was there self-defense? Was there not? But instead, you're talking about some black woman and if he was attracted to a black woman. When there was no black woman even involved. I mean, these are not even concerns to anyone to this day because he's not alive. He can't even express a preference anymore, you know? So who cares what he likes? Who cares what he prefers? To me, those aren't big issues to me. What's more important was, you know, the abuse being done. But as far as the image of how this makes black women and black men look, well, no, it's not positive. Because in this situation, it's like, you know, it makes black men and black women look violent, you know, when people are beating people up enough where they had to get stabbed, basically, and succumb to their injuries because they were putting someone's life at risk. So that's all I have to say in this video. I'm going to be done. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe. And I really like this video, actually, of Uppity Unicorn. I like it. Um, even though I just don't really agree with her perspective, I still like hearing her perspective. She does have, I don't know, I just, I tend to like, um, her, her videos, even if she has a different perspective. So, that's all I have to say in this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye.